In this video, I would like to talk about this trade that I took on the Swizzy today, uh, the 29th of August. I'm still on holiday, but I've got some time, so I look at the charts and I saw this, so I took it here. Now, let's talk about a few things. Now, first I saw this wave up. So, on the hourly chart, as you can see, uh, this was, there was a strong three down, but that didn't bother me too much because of the reasons I will talk about in a bit. And then we had uh, the wave four down. Now, this is a wave four down, but it's a sideways wave four. We can draw a box. You can see it was going sideways, and then it created this inner box here. Now let's clear that. Um, so this is the London Open around here. We have a three up, four down. Now the three is not really a clean three up, so that wasn't really uh, powerful. But what I saw in this setup was what I saw on the four hour chart and, and the daily chart, and also how the day was going. Um, and then when I figured that out, uh, when I talk about that, then I will talk about uh, this this bit and this bit and how I got another add-on into this trade. All right. So let's get rid of that. Now let's go to the daily chart. So, oh, basically first. So you'd see um, a strong three down and you'd be waiting for a sideways, you know, for a uh, for a setup one to go short, uh, which was over here. Now, would I have taken that? Most probably I would have. Uh, so if your stop loss was, if your pending order was two pips below and it got you in, it was a quick, swift rent. It's part of the game, no problem at all. And then when you look at the chart a few days later, you find out that, okay, this move up itself has turned into a three. And then when you looked at it today, you can find a three and a four. So without looking at any, in, at any other chart, you knew that it's a setup one. But was it worth taking the long? Now let's go to the four hour chart. You can see on the four hour chart that uh, the move up before this move down was actually happening. And then if you go to the daily chart, you can see that the Swizzy was going down since the start of May. It created a th wave three. In July, it was a wave four. And then in the early part of August, it did its wave five, which started with this apple signal. As you can see, it's a strong uh, fruit signal, which is between the gated and purple. That's an apple. And it goes on to create a wave five. Let's see if it hit target zone one. So in this case, it, it hasn't hit target zone one, but it came pretty close to it. And when it came close to it, we could see a strong rejection. So as you can see, these are strong bear candles followed by sideways candles, and then it was rejected. The break of this box did not really happen because it was a rejection, it went up. And when there's a cherry like this, most probably I won't take that cherry because this is giving me a stronger signal that it's going uh, up. It's been rejected and the wave's already uh, kind of complete. And then the price goes up and then there's a strong rejection again towards the downside. Now after this, I would have been looking for a setup on the hourly chart which I showed you. So let's go there again. So you can see after this strong move down, and mind you, it is a bit too strong for the day. So when a move is too strong, it's usually followed by a, a reversal, a reaction. So the markets are really funny because when, when, when there's a change that is too far too fast, usually that, chain is, that change is difficult to sustain and the, the opposite forces take over. So in this case, it moved down too far too fast and then the reaction of that was that strong buying started happening 
and now price has gone all the way up there but anyway we would still be looking for because if you look at it when the three was down here you can see that the pullback was exactly 60 62 or 50 percent right and let's get rid of that but then it didn't it didn't happen the setup one failed and it went up and that four was not a four anymore in fact it was a three up and then that gave me the um, more confidence to say you know what the down move is not working it could probably a sideways move or it's a reversal and now after the completed three and four five the price is going up but since I'm trading it only on the hourly chart all I need is today's movement and probably a bit tomorrow now when it broke out here and it went up this was pretty good I could have moved my stop loss to break even but guess what I did not move my stop loss to break even um, this uh, let me change let me bring my arrow so this one this stop loss belongs to this entry and this entry uh, this entry its stop loss is here now how did I get this entry it it was a little bit uh, of analysis of this wave so I thought okay so all all of all of this aside whatever this is today's movement is this move this is going up and then it's going to pull back and my guess was that most probably it's going to pull back to this side this around here so when price went up and my entry was here then a lot of people would have moved their stop loss to oh wrong one to this entry level but i could see that it most probably it will come back to retest this level and i will be kicked out and the fact that i had gone in with half a risk it wasn't half a rake, it was a very small position because I'm only playing it. Um, if I if I looked at it and I thought, well, if if my if I bring my stop loss here, price will come down and hit it. That is not what I wanted to do. Moreover, I looked at it and I thought, okay, if this is three up and this is four down, then this would probably turn into a one and two. And this is where probably the wave five will end or whatever it is so we can check the the inside of this by going inside it so I've just drawn a, a rectangle around it so that when I go to a lower time frame to expand this chart uh, we will know where we are as you can see on the m15 chart this strong move up is the three up and then it pulls back and it creates what we call um, uh, what do we call it we call it the principal C so this here this here and this here now this bit is the C so we would call this the A this the B and this the C and if this is ABC you can see here the stepping up box and then it breaks against the stepping up but does not sustain it instead creates one box low which is lower than the previous setting up and then continues to go up this this is now confirmed as a PC which we call a PC principle C which means we had a wave one or a wave three up followed by a corrective wave and those corrective wave create that corrective wave created an ABC pattern and that's why it's that 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 is what principle C is so if this is true that this is three and this is ABC then this wave up will be wave five so let's go to the M5 time frame and you can see a very clear three four five forming up now if this was supposed to be the wave three and this happens to be the wave four then as you can see it's already hit target zone one which is also in line with the peak of three so if we were trading it on the m5 chart or something 
And if you want to just quickly take profit, we'd think, you know what, it's already hit the level and it's gonna come around. As you can see, it's, it's reacting live in front of you because it's hit those levels. But what I'm thinking is that, what if it's a wave one up and two down? In that case, this wave that's going up can possibly turn into a new wave three. And that is exactly what we would like on the H1. So when it, when it turns into the wave three for the M5 chart, it will come somewhere there and then react and this three, four, five will be completed. Uh, and based on this information around here and based on this information, I actually added on one more time around here. Come on, come on. So this was the original entry and then price was around here. I added it one more time and put my stop loss below this box. So if it was only for this M5 chart, most probably my target point would have been there, but because my entry is and the trade is on the hourly chart, I am hoping for this to go all the way there. If it doesn't go, that's fine. We played it nicely, we enjoyed it. And so this is one of the difficult setup one or the setup to trade. The other ones, the easy ones are the ones where you have a wave three down, which is created uh, within one, two, maximum three days of price action. So this is one, two, three. This one was formed with one day of wave three, one day of wave four. But look at it. This is this is not the kind of wave four that we're looking for. This is a this is quite impulsive, steep going up. So if we draw this, see, uh, not that one. If we draw this, this is steep wave three down, and then followed by a steep wave four up. And soon we found out this was not a wave four up. It was something counter to this. So that's how we do it. So normally if this was a nice, lovely wave three down, guess where wave four would have formed? It would have come around here and then this bit would be somewhere here. And it probably would have stayed in a tighter box or even this was tight, but it was all the way up there. It would have pulled back about 38 and then it would have stayed around here and then after it stayed there probably in the evening or probably it probably even stayed to the to the next day around here and then the price would break out probably retest it and go down and hit targets on one but that didn't happen so we played it differently um, and yeah so Although we have all the rules and everything for the setup, but you know, the market is not really linear. So these rules kind of overlap and you have to take three, 400 trades following the same method to fully understand how to trade the setup one. And I hope you liked the video. If this is on the YouTube, if you're watching it on the YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel and please share it. And if you comment, that would be very nice because comments is just, pretty good now. I mean, comments are good now. They used to be rubbish in the past, but now they're good. And it kind of gives a lot of feedback uh, for the person who, you know, shares the video. So please do so. Thank you.